Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new 4K x86 single board computer known as the UE2 X1. I'm just going to be referring to it as the X1. And this thing definitely looks really interesting. They are offering a few different RAM and storage variants. Some of these will come with eMMC storage and a pre-installed operating system, or you can opt to go a bit cheaper with it with no eMMC and add your own NVMe SSD. But uh, here it is, the X1. So this is actually packed with I.O., given how small this thing is. Comes with its own active cooler. I haven't run into any thermal throttling. And one of my favorite things about these little boards is the fact that it's powered by an x86 CPU. So the compatibility is already there. We've got a lot of different operating systems that we can mess with right out of the box. No configuration. You want to go with Windows 10, Windows 11, or your favorite Linux distro? It's going to work on this little board. And inside of the box with the version that I have here, basically we just have the X1 SBC and a 12 volt 3 amp power supply. Like I mentioned, lots of I.O. for its form factor. It does have gigabit Ethernet. We've got USB 3, USB 2.0, micro SD card slot, mini HDMI, full size HDMI. We've even got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And down here on the bottom, we've got enough room for a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth card with that M.2 key E slot. And we can actually add an NVMe. PCIe 3.0 is supported. And of course, when anybody thinks of a single board computer, they think of the Raspberry Pi. I wanted to give you a little size comparison here. We've got the new Raspberry Pi 5 versus the X1. As you can see, it's not coming in much larger at all. So for the testing I'm going to be doing in this video, I installed a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Now I wanted more storage, but this also comes with eMMC storage if you opt to get it. You can go from 16 up to 256, and we'll talk about the models in a second. But uh, the first thing I want to do is just give you a quick overview of all of the I.O. here. They do have a nice breakdown or a diagram over on their website, so we're going to look at that real quick. At the very bottom, we've got those white, yellow, and blue connectors. Fan connector, GPIO, SPI, I2C, UR, and we can actually add two extra USB ports directly from here. There's also a speaker connector. We've got our power button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, HDMI 2.0, this is full size, couple status LEDs, DC power in, this takes 12 volts, or we can use the power connector. It's a two pin red power connector on the board. It's got a microphone connector, micro HDMI, power over ethernet connector. It's not populated with pins, but it should be easy enough to do. We've also got micro SD, full size gigabit ethernet port, two USB 2.0 ports, and two USB 3.0 ports. Moving around to the bottom, it does have a MIPI connector for a DSi display, an M.2 M key slot, and this will support a PCIe 3.0 NVMe SSD, RTC connector, another microphone connector, and one more M.2 slot. Now this is an E key. We can do Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module or a 4G LTE module if you opted to do it that way. Taking a look at the overall specs here, for the CPU, we've got the Intel Celeron N5105. With this, we get four cores, no extra threads, with a boost up to 2.9 GHz. It's got the Intel UHD iGPU with 24 EUs up to 800 MHz. You can pick this up with either 4, 8, or 16 GB of soldered LP DDR4 RAM. The unit I'm going to be testing in this video has 8 gigabytes of RAM, but along with that, you can also opt for some eMMC storage, 64, 128, or 256, plus they sell this with no eMMC for cheaper. Remember, we can always add a PCIe 3.0 NVMe SSD. It runs on a 12 volt, 3 amp power supply. And of course, since we have an x86 CPU, we can run Linux on this if we want to, Windows 10 or Windows 11. I just happen to install Windows 11 Pro on the one we're going to be testing in this video. When it comes down to it, I'm really interested to see how this works as a desktop PC for light gaming, emulation, web browsing, and 4K video playback. So if you're ready to get into it, Let's move over there now. All right, so here it is. I've installed Windows 11 on the M.2 SSD. Remember, we've got that eMMC storage, but it is a bit slow. Um, I mean, you could definitely run Windows from it. Comes with it installed, but I'd kind of save that for Linux. Just a lighter operating system. BIOS is unlocked. Uh, you can actually up the TDP, but the highest that I've been able to take this little chip is up to 18 watts. I mean, that's about what it'll max out at. We've only got four cores. And that 24 EU Intel UHD iGPU, so uh, there's really not much more power that we need to throw at this thing. It's basically maxed out. 
When all four cores boost, it goes up to 2.8 on all four cores. It can reach 2.9 on a single core. But let's check out some 4K video playback because this little thing does way better than I thought it would. We're going to go up to 4K. So this is 4K HDR, stats for nerds on. Up here, we've got our viewpoint and drop frames. Of course, we've seen the CPU and other mini PCs on the market, and overall, I've always thought we had really great 4K video playback with it. Even the older 4105 did a pretty decent job with 4K, and if you take a look at stats for nerds, we're not dropping mini frames at all. Even on one of my main gaming PCs, which has a much more powerful GPU and CPU, on the initial load-in with, you know, these 4K 60 videos, I get a couple drop frames, and then it kind of evens right out. So I'm looking at kind of the same performance here, and even if I wanted to do native playback from an internal drive or even an external SSD, it'd be fine with this little machine. So far, not too bad, even when it comes to web browsing, but keep in mind I am connected over Ethernet. We don't have built-in Wi-Fi, but we do have that slot we can add a Wi-Fi card to. Just heading over to their website here. Lots of great information. We can also check out the wiki. Really surprised at how well they document everything. So the X1 SBC right here. Everything you need to know about the board. Installing Linux, installing Windows is here. They've got a BIOS update. And remember, you can get this with 4, 8, or 16. I've got the 8 gig model. Having 16 would be nice. And another thing here is this is actually running in single channel with the 8 gig model. I thought it would be dual, so that will hurt that GPU a little bit. But when it comes to older games and emulation, this thing is trucking right along. And that's the next thing I wanted to test. We're going to get into some PC gaming, then we'll move over to some emulation. Going in with it really light, we've got Cuphead. And uh, if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that we're at around 8 watts. 7.7 .7 up to 8 watts with this game doesn't take much to run. And it is at a constant 60 FPS. Again, this maxes out at 18 watts in total. And that's for the CPU and GPU. So if I was to stress both of them out, the maximum we could hit is 18 watts. Dead Cells is another one that's going to run really well on this little chipset. But don't expect something like Cyberpunk 2077 to run on the uh, 5105, it's just not going to do it. If you wanted to go with some older stuff, like uh, Left 4 Dead, low settings, 720p, Half-Life 2, it'll run, and even Skyrim. So we've got OG Skyrim, 720p, low settings, and this basically maxes out this little board at 18 watts. Remember, all four cores boosting at the same time can go up to 2.8, or a single core can go up to 2.9. Next thing I wanted to show off was some emulation, and first up we've got some N64. I'm using RetroArch with the Moopin 64 core. Got a few hiccups here and there, but I mean this does have more than enough power to emulate N64. If you wanted to go with Project 64, you'll probably see a much smoother experience, but I already had RetroArch ready to go, so here it is. I also threw some Sega Saturn at it using RetroArch and the Yobase and Shiro core. To my surprise, we're seeing some decent performance. It really comes down to the CPU just putting out more power than the little ARM chips can. Moving up a bit to PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, we've got Ghost of Sparta, 2x resolution, Vulcan back in. I went through, I tested DX11 and Vulcan, both of them seem to perform the same. But overall, PSP is fully playable on this little machine, so as long as the game's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator, it's going to run it, and the easier to emulate stuff can be upscaled much higher than this. And the final emulator I wanted to test here was Dolphin for some GameCube and Wii. So with this little chipset, DX11 is definitely where it's at. I also tested Vulcan, not too bad, and with some games you might need to swap in between the two, but here we have Auto Modalista, native resolution, running at 60. And you can see we've maxed out that TDP. We're right there at 18 watts. And I also tested a Wii game, one of my favorite fighters, Tatsunoko versus Capcom, DX11, still at that native resolution. It's not looking bad at all for GameCube and Wii emulation. Now, when it comes to PS2, I can test that down the road. I've actually had a little better luck with Linux, so if you want me to install Linux on this board, just let me know in the comments below. 
So overall, the X1 is actually performing really well. Now we've seen that N5105 in other mini PCs and single board computers. And the great thing here is the compatibility is ready to go. I mean, you can install Windows, you can install Linux. It's an x86 chip, so there's lots of operating systems and applications that are going to run right out of the box. So that's something you definitely don't have to worry about when picking up a board like this. And the pricing really isn't that bad either. When it comes to the 4 gig model with no eMMC storage, 109. The 8 gig model with no eMMC, 124. And you can do up to the 16 at 189. But you know, if I was to go in this, I'd probably opt for that mid range right there with that 8 gig at 124. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the X1, like more games, emulators, or even different operating systems, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.